Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I've got some more tournament games for you. But this is... It's a very special weekend, ladies and gentlemen. This was the weekend when the new Pokemon trading card game set Breakpoint was legal for the very first time. So I got myself down to Mad for Miniatures in St. Austell in the most beautiful part of the UK, that being Cornwall. And I recorded a whole bunch of games from a city championship. The format here is X and Y to Breakpoint. It is standard format, but Breakpoint is now legal. We are playing best of three we are playing 50 minutes, and I've made sure to get some decks in here that are using cards from the new set so we can see how good they are and we can start making an assessment of how much of an impact they're going to make. Huge thank you to Vinnie Gardner and all at Mad for Miniatures for allowing me to record and making it very simple. So sit back, grab yourselves a nice beverage, and enjoy this game from the first weekend when Breakpoint was legal. 50 minutes, best of three, X and Y to Breakpoint. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so on the left we have Josh Poet Pierce, he's going to be playing Night March, and on the right we have Susie Masters, and she is going to be playing Manectric, well, it's a weird kind of uh, variant, it's Mega Manectric Psychic stuff, so we've got Wobbuffet in there, we've got Cresselia, etc. Now, you do not want to start a lone shaman against Night March, that is not ideal, and, I mean, losing the flip is, is also not ideal, quite frankly, because... Well, Night March tends to have good stars. Now, Josh gets a Battle Compressor going straight away. He's using a Yu-Gi-Oh! mat. I think he's doing that to mess with us. It's just a little bit mean. Now, we do seem weirdly close here. I couldn't get the angle right on the camera, though I should point out I later realised that was my fault. Hey-ho. So he gets free Lampant in the discard straight away, and he plays a second Battle Compressor. Now, remember, Night March is that deck where you attack with either Joltic or Pumpkaboo, both of which have the attack Night March, which allows you to do 20 damage for each Pokemon in the discard that has the Night March attack. So, straight away, we see three Lampants and we see a Pumpkaboo, and we see he's dropping a couple of supporters there. Because you know how it works nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody plays 4VS Seeker in their deck. We see a trainer's mail here from Josh. And there was a Rosic and an Acro bike there. And he does go for the Acro bike. Night March, early doors. They want to draw cards. Nowadays, everybody uses 4VS Seeker. So what you can do straight away is use... VS, you know, dump everything with Battle Compressor. And then use VS Seeker to get them back. So I... Didn't see what she grabbed there. It, um, it was either a Battle Compressor or a Pump Kaboo. Either way, he is now using an Ultra Ball with a Lampant and a Pump Kaboo. So we got four, all four Lampants in the... Oh, and he did dump the Pump Kaboo for the Battle Compressor. There goes Battle Compressor number three. And he's got all four Lampant in the discard. And it looks like, I think, three Pump Kaboo as well. We have cut the corner off due to the angle of the camera. In the space constraints we had, I don't know. I think I could have. I think I could have done something a bit more. Either way, we see this is a good turn one from Josh. Now the likelihood is he's not going to be playing any DCEs this turn because he's not going to be attacking. And Josh is a very good player. I believe the last time we saw him on this channel. Oh, and we see a shame in there as well. I believe the last time we saw him on this channel was with. Uh, when we had the national stream, and I have actually got a separate playlist for the national stream, so go check on my channel, you'll see that playlist. And, oh, and here we see the VS Seeker for the Hex Maniac, and it looks like he's going to play it straight away. And this is the power of all those Battle Compressors, turn one. You can get rid of all the supporters you like, and then you can play a VS Seeker, and you basically have your choice of any supporter in your deck. And this is a powerful turn one play from Josh. He plays Hex Maniac, that's the supporter card, which stops Susie now playing any abilities on her turn. Which means something like a Shaman, for instance, which she could use to draw more cards, is not going to be able to be used. Uh, we do see a Delinquent coming down. Now, remember I said in the intro, 
we are using these videos to showcase some new cards and delinquent is one of those new cards now it can't be used at the moment because there isn't a stadium in play but if there is a stadium in play you can play it and you force your opponent to discard three cards from their hand now they do get a choice of which cards to discard of course and they can discard whichever of three they choose but when was the last time you were playing a game and you were like you know what I can discard three cards and it really doesn't matter. I can afford to drop all three of these cards from my hand. Of course, I believe it can only be used if you've got a stadium in play and right now Susie does not. She does have an Ultra Ball though, which she's going to use to get rid of a Hex Maniac of her own. And a, del and a Delinquent, which she got off the... Um, off the trainer's mail. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that as with a lot of these things, like I say, VSC can mean she can get them back whenever she wants it. So it's it's not the end of the world that she's gone and got rid of those. So she's gone for a Manectric. Like I've said, this is a Mega Manectric deck, so the first thing she wants is to get a, a, a Manectric down. Now, given what Night March does, how quickly it gets you know, it gets the old KOs, there is very much an argument here that Susie should be considering going for a non-EX Pokemon here. Now, I know she plays the Cresselia from Breakthrough because she's going to be given a K up a KO of something. And all oh, when she's having to pass with that shame inactive. And this could be a very, very quick game indeed. Because what's potentially going to happen here is, I mean, as long as he's got a DCE, your Shaman's weak to pump uh, to Joltik, weak to Lightning, and Josh has already got, I think, maybe seven, eight Night Marks in the discard, at least. So, he's got enough to KO that Shaman on turn one, which means he's going to be two prizes up, and it's going to be very difficult for Susie to come back from that. Now, there is a possibility here that... He can actually get a, a Lysander here, pull up the Manectric, get a KO on the Manectric. And then, not only is he going to go two prizes up, and like I say, he had the DC, he was just holding it because he didn't want to use it yet. And then there's that Shaman, which is sitting there on the bench, that he can go and KO at some point in the future. Now, what Josh doesn't want to get into here is a situation where he has to KO Mega Manectric. Now, uh, Manectric's got 170 HP, that's 9 Night Marches, or 8 and a Muscle Band. But Mega Manectric, oh, we see a town map played here so that he can just go about and uncover all of his all of his prizes, see what's in there. Although it must be, at least, it's at least 7. If there's no Joltic, there's 7 in there. So he'll need another 2. He'll need another 2 Night Marches to take down that Manectric. Now... A Mega Manectric has got 210 HP. And that's a little bit of a problem. Because that m means he's going to need 11 Night Marchers. Or 10 and a Muscle Band. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that you only play 12 Night Marchers. Your 4 Lampant, your 4 Pump Kaboo, and your 4 Joltic. So, that is a bad situation if he's forced to do it now here's another awkward part here oh okay and there, there goes the awkwardness now we see he played another hex maniac he's trying to again he's trying to slow Susie down here he took the az because of course if Susie gets a ko here and there we go jolt it's got 30 hp she's got the ko although if she doesn't have another basic down this could be over pretty quickly this could be over next turn. Because there's eight Night Marchers. If Josh can get one Night Marcher in the discard and then get one in the active with a DCE, he's got game right here, right now. And, oh, and there is the Night Marcher. There's the DCE. He's going to need one more in the discard. He picks up the Shaman. Now, that was my worry last turn. The fact that when the Joltic came down, Josh would have to put a Shaman. Oh, and it looks like he's actually got enough as it is. So my concern there was that he was able... You know, he was going to have a Shaman in the active and not be able to get it out of the active. But he played the town map. He saw the AZ in his prizes. He knew he was going to be able to take that AZ out of his prizes, pick up the Shaman, draw more cards, and get the Night Marcher in the active. And you saw there the Hex Maniac. That's what really won Josh that game. Now, don't get me wrong. He had an amazing start. He went first. His deck seems super consistent. And I can confirm I played Josh at this tournament. 
And I, I'm one of those mean people. I shuffle decks before every game. I don't do cutting. I do full-on shuffling. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, his deck is just that consistent and that good. Um, yeah, it, it, it <laughs> he, he's, he's doing pretty well with it, shall we say. So, a good start there from Josh. He goes one game up. And the Mega Manectric could be a pain if it comes out, but with Lysander and other Pokemon, and let's not forget he can get the KO on the Manectric. He plays a 2-2 Milotic line. It, um, pretty sure we saw it, yeah, because at one point we had one in the prizes and he had one in his hand. So there's a 2-2 Milotic line there that we can use to, re or he can use to reuse Night Marchers. And because he's taking free EX KOs, he doesn't need to use Milotic Remember, the ability allows you to grab any card from the discard and put it in your hand. He doesn't need to use Milotic to recover DCEs, which he would in a lot of games. So he can get himself in a situation where he dumps a whole bunch of Night Marchers, gets a KO on Mega Manectric, his last Night Marcher gets KO'd, and then he can just use Milotic to recover one and then attach a DCE and get the KO. So playing that 2-2 Milotic line does afford him the ability to literally play with 11 in the discard, 1 in the active, if it comes down to it. Because he's going to be going for big EX KOs. He's less reliant on DCE, so that is an option available to him. Now he is going to be going second here, which sometimes can be good for Night March and sometimes can be bad. The good news is he's getting the first KO. We see an Ultra Ball there, dropping a couple supporters. As always, the S Seeker will get them back when needed. It allows him to get the first KO, and that's a very good thing. He could get a turn one KO on that Manectric if he can get nine Night Marks in the discard, or eight in the discard plus a Muscle Band. However, I know from watching Susie in a later game that at around that finished early, I, I think she comes on stream a little bit later as well, and I watched a bit of her game. And what I can tell you is that she plays a fairly, a, a, a fair few Wobbuffet. And Wobbuffet blocks support, uh, blocks abilities from your opponent's Pokemon. So if Susie can get a Wobbuffet in the active this turn, then she can stop Josh using Shaman, and that might slow down his setup enough that she can get, and if she gets a couple of Mega set up, she's going to be in a good position. I remind you, of course, that that doesn't mean... Josh can't get a KO, and that's a big thing here, that Josh will potentially be able to get a KO on that Mega, and if he can get to KOing Megas, he's going to be all right. Now, what Susie really wants to do here is try and empty her hand a bit, and that Sycamore's good. That is a good Sycamore. Okay. She must have enough supporter in hand, because that Sycamore allows her to draw a lot of stuff. So she goes for the Muscle Band here. Um... And I remember a Manectric with one energy and a Muscle Band does KO both Feebas... Well, actually, Fee, uh, it does KO both Feebas and Joltik. But let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that in order to do that, she's giving up that 40 HP, otherwise known as two Night Marchers. Oh, I apologise. I was going to say, she did already have a Sycamore in hand. So the question is here, does she shame in to draw four cards or just Sycamore? She shame in for four, and I don't think that's a terrible idea. Josh, and we see a Cresselia coming down there. Cresselia itself has free retreat if there is a stadium in play. Oh, that was not a great... And you can never tell, but that wasn't... It's not a very commonly used card. It wasn't a great shame in, but you never knew. Um, in the end, all she did from that Shaman was get a Cresselia and then Sycamore. So in the end, all that Shaman really did was get a Cresselia and a Shaman on the bench. But she's got a Wobbuffet. So what she is going to be able to do is bench that Wobbuffet, retreat the Manectric into the Wobbuffet. Um, and then she'll be able to block any abilities from Josh. So that is something she can... And now maybe she wants to leave the Manectric in the active... Hope that it survives the next turn and then use it to spread some damage and get some KOs. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, if I were her, I'd bench that Wobbuffet. I would then retreat the Manectric into the Wobbuffet and basically say to Josh, you know what? Come at me, bro. Now, Wobbuffet does have 110 HP and is weak to Psychic. So what that means is Josh would need just three Night Marchers to get the KO. Okay, and if he's got a Muscle Band here, he would have the KO. Uh, not a muscle band, sorry, a double colorless energy. He would have the KO. Uh, maybe it's worth it. Um, 
I mean, if I was Susie, I'd be tempted to put the Wobbuffet down. And then if the Wobbuffet KOs, just force Josh into a seven prize game. Basically say, you know what, Josh, fine. You can have my Wobbuffet. But I'm still going to make you KO free EX Pokemon to get the win. So essentially, KOing my Wobbuffet did nothing for you. You still, you had to KO free EXs. You killed my Wobbuffet. You've still got to KO free EXs. So, you know, I don't really care. In your stupid face, Josh. In your stupid face. Although, I should mention, Susie is actually a lovely person and would not say that. For those in the UK, she runs Yeovil League. That's, um, what, maybe two and a half hours? No, maybe about two hours up the road from St. Austell where this particular city championship is being held on this fine day. So, we've got a guy who did very, very well at Nationals, Co Top Cut Nationals, if I remember correctly, with Verizzi and Genesect. Oh, we see a Giovanni scheme. Now, that gives Josh a choice of either drawing till he had five in his hand or doing 20 more damage, same as a muscle band. He chose to draw, but it looked, um, because obviously he wants a DCE, but it looks like he hit VS Seeker, VS Seeker, Feebas, which is a little bit disappointing, quite frankly. So, I would have gone for the Wobbuffet play, Oh, sorry, I think at Nationals, Josh was playing Rizzi and Genesect. Go back and have a look. There is a playlist on my channel for Nationals. And actually, go back and look. That was some of my best work, ladies and gentlemen. Go watch the Nationals videos. They're fun. But let's watch this one first. So Susie's gamble paid off. I would have gone Wobbuffet. Josh didn't get the DCE. He didn't have any shame in to use. And now, ladies and gentlemen, now we're rolling. Now Susie's got the... Um... Now she hasn't had to give up a KO. Now she hasn't had to waste the energy discarding to retreat the Manectric. And now she doesn't have to try and retreat the Wobbuffet. And now she can do things like, I mean, if she's got a, um, if she's got a Lysander, she can actually kill one of the Feebas and put 20 damage on the other. Meaning that unless Josh has a Milotic next turn, she's getting a... Two KOs on the Feebas with the um, with the overrun attack, which is really quite good. You know, Joltix and Feebas, they do fall quite quickly to that overrun attack. So Susie's gone and got herself another Manectric. Now she has discarded a Sycamore in order to get the Manectric. Ah, I was going to say, what other supporter does she have? Oh, that's at least two Sycamores and a VS Seeker in order to do that. I should mention, I should say a big thank you to both of these players for um for agreeing to be on the stream in this round. Because in this, we got a big table out back. And um I should say a huge thanks to Mad for Miniatures in St. Austell in Cornwall in the UK. And especially to Vinnie Gardner himself, the owner of the shop. As, you get, uh, as we see Susie grabbing a enhanced hammer from that. Because they set us up in a lovely back room with a plug and they had some lights overhead to give us more light, to give us a clearer picture, which I very much appreciate. Uh, there was a little quirk of it, though. We were on a very cold day and the main play area was kind of semi-outside. It's in a big hall with a, with a big door. It's very cold. Inside was nice and warm. So the players inside got a bit of warmth, but the players inside had to stand up. Because the table was very tall. Now, there were a couple of weird stools you could use. But, you know, thank you to both players for coming into the back room and standing up. And like I say, huge thank you to Vinny Gardner and Mad for Miniatures in St. Austell in the UK. I am always bowled over by how much help I'm given with the stream. And I love everyone that's willing to help. It's wonderful. So Susie there, she chooses not to do the overrun. She didn't have a Lysander. She just uses Assault Laser to KO a Pump Kaboo. Does 60 damage, 120 if they've got a tool attached, plus 20 for the muscle band on Manectric. But that is all, of course, a moot point because Manectric, you know, Pumpkaboo's got 60 HP. And now, now Josh is really under the kibosh. And it, oh, this is not an ideal situation, ladies and gentlemen. He's having to VS Seeker for a Giovanni's to draw some cards. Now I'm I believe he had at least one Battle Compressor early game. Oh, we see a Fighting Fury belt coming down. That's one of the new cards from Breakpoint we wanted to see. It gives Pumpkaboo 40 more HP. So it's now got 100 HP. Of course, it's got 40 more HP. 
but having it all attached, let's Manectric do 60 more. N now, Suze, now this is looking good for Susie, especially if she can get a Spirit Link and Mega Revolve that benched Manectric, give it that HP that's really going to make Josh struggle to KO it, while going two prizes up, while Josh is clearly not having a good time of it. And she is going to be in a very, very good position. Now, I should point out at this stage, ladies and gentlemen, Josh, and this happened to me, we're going to see this, um, it's happened to plenty of people throughout the tournament. Most people who played Battle Compressor make this mistake at some point. Let's not judge Josh for this. But what I will say is, He's put himself in an awkward position because he used a Battle Compressor. And we see here, he's using VS Seeker to recover supporters from the discard. He could have put a Sycamore in his discard pile. He could have put another supporter, and we see an Ultra Ball. I believe that's two Lysander, if I remember correctly. We're not seeing much of the card. I want to say it's Lysander. He could have used a Battle Compressor early game to put other supporters in the discard pile. He chose not to, and by, do and by not doing that, He's put himself in an awkward position where he's having to use Giovanni's, his supporter for the turn, to draw until he's got five cards in his hand. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not an ideal situation in which to be. So he's gone and gra used an Ultra Ball to grab a Manectric. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it looks like Susie played a Hex Maniac last turn. It's on top of a discard. I believe she did. I could be wrong. It could just be... No, I think she might have ultra balled, you know. I think she might have ultra balled. I'm not entirely sure. I've lost I've lost track for a second. But if she used a Hex Maniac, that's a really good play. Essentially turning it round on Josh, basically saying, you know what? You can use Hex Maniac, I can use Hex Maniac. And whether he plays it or not is going to show us whether Susie did. I know she did Ultra Ball 1 at some point. I think she played it last turn. I could be wrong. No, she... Okay. And just as I actually take a stance and make a decision, clearly I'm wrong. So he uses that to get a Battle Compressor. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, no. Okay, this is interesting. He chose to go for a VS Seeker to reuse a Giovanni's rather than going for a Battle Compressor to put another supporter in the discard because I think he's got a VS Seeker in hand he could be using. Now, what I can only imagine this happening is he's got like a DCE in hand. He doesn't want to discard. So, and thumbs down, Josh. Thumbs down indeed. It looks like he's got an awkward hand. He doesn't want to Sycamore. And he's just not getting the draws to do really anything else. Now, it looked like he had another VS Seeker in hand. So, there was... Da oh! <laughs> now, oh, it, look it looks like Susie's just thinning her deck with a Battle Compressor here. If she's got a VS Seeker and plays a Delinquent, this could be juicy, ladies and gentlemen. Because we see Josh has not got very much of a hand at all. And playing delinquent to make him discard three cards could be absolutely devastating. Assuming, of course, that she has a VS Seeker that she can use. Now, we saw a Sycamore earlier discarding at least one VS Seeker. A fancy old reverse hollow VS Seeker, I might add. So, Josh not having the best time of it here. But, he doesn't need a fast start against this EX heavy deck. Because at the end of the day, he can take three EX KOs to win the game. So Susie can go up three prizes here, and Josh can still win the prize trade, as long as Josh never puts a um, Shaman down. Because here Susie get, takes a prize, goes down to three. Josh takes two prizes, down to four. Susie takes a prize, down to two. Josh takes two prizes, down to two. Susie takes a prize, goes down to one, and then Josh can win. So even if Susie takes a prize this turn, if Josh can knock out three EXKOs on the bounce in a row, he's still going to win the prize race. And that prize race, and that is crucial, ladies and gentlemen. So he is not out of this game yet by any stretch of the imagination. So we see a Raikou and a Hooper going down. Raikou's the one that does uh, have, takes 20 less damage if he's got lightning energy attached. And we see another shame in from Susie. She really wants to draw something. I mean, ideally here, she wants a Spirit Link and a Manectric. That would be 
that would be ideal here. Having a 210 HP Pokemon ready to go, because as I've said, Night March can KO it, and we see that Josh plays Giovanni's, but even with a Giovanni scheme, ladies and gentlemen, he still needs 10 Night Marches in the discard, and he's only playing 12. Now, Susie's going to go three prizes up here, but that won't win her the prize race. Now, if Josh whiffs an EXKO here, then Susie can get ahead in the prize race. She's taken three, and that's a good start. But like I've said, with the EXKOs, Josh still has an opportunity to win the prize race. Now, he's going to need a muscle band or an A, excuse me, a floatstone or an AZ to get the Milotic out the active. He's going to need the DCE, which he's got there, and he's going to need nine night marchers in the discard pile. Now, I don't believe Susie plays DCE, and that's a shame, because Joltik's got 30 HP, and Shaman does 30 damage for a DCE. So what Susie could be doing here, and it doesn't look like she's got the option, she could actually use Sky Return to KO the Joltik, and then put a Wobbuffet in the active, so that Josh doesn't have any abilities. I mean, that would be something I'd be trying. And she's got two energy on the field. One of them could be on a Shaman, so that one energy it doesn't have to be a DCE. So let's say the Lightning or the Psychic were on the Shaman. Susie would then have the opportunity of attaching a second energy, using Sky Return to KO the Joltik, and then getting a prize while putting a Wobbuffet active, which would do two things. Firstly, it would force Josh into having to have a Lysander to take the game. Or to take a prize. To take an EX KO to take two prizes. And secondly, it would turn off his abilities. And if Josh... Now, Josh can only win the prize trade here by taking an EX KO three turns in a row. If he doesn't take an EX KO three turns in a row, then Susie, as long as she doesn't miss a turn of KOs will win the prize race. So being able to take a KO with Shaman and then whacking the Wobbuffet into the active would be a very strong play. Of course, there is every possibility that if she puts the energy on Shaman, that Josh puts down a Pumpkaboo rather than a Joltik. Or Josh starts prioritising a Lysander to KO the Shaman because he would, have, he would probably spot the play. I mean, he's a very good player. I assume he'd spot the play. And he'd be working to try and avoid it. And this is really the, the downside of playing against these Night March decks. Because most of the time, they go off like a rocket and start taking prizes very early, as we saw in Game 1. But even when they don't go off like a rocket and start taking prizes that early, it's really not the end of the world, because... Like I say, against an EX-heavy deck like this, you don't need to take a prize every turn. Now, the other thing is, and I've mentioned this before, but I think it bears repeating. And we see an acro bike there for an acro bike. How many times have we done that? An acro bike for a trainer's mail. A trainer's mail. Oh, he's got a float stone there. But he's gone town map, so we must have another way to get the Milotic out of the active. He cannot let that Milotic get KO'd next turn. He, he can't let it happen. If he lets the Milotic get KO'd, he's going to be in a lot of trouble because then he can't win the prize race anymore. He also can't bench, there we go, a Shaman. Now that opens up the door for Susie now. Because Susie now needs to take one KO, and it could be on a lowly Joltik. And then a two energy Manectric, KOs a Shaman, and it's game. So by benching that Shaman, Josh puts himself in a position where he might not be able to win the prize race anymore. Now, having said that, and there is the AZ. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, and then actually the Feebas goes down on the bench here so that Josh now has the possibility of reusing the Milotic next turn. Now, something else that we need to mention here is the Joltik. It's now got a Fighting Fury belt. That's a new breakpoint card that we need to be having a quick gander at. It gives Joltik plus 40 HP. It means he's got 70 HP. That ain't good. Because that's not a KO. Oh, he said it is a KO, so it's doing 120. But this isn't enough. Susie needs the Mega here. 
She needs a Spirit Link Mega Manectric. What that will mean is, not only will she get the KO, not only will she go up to 210 HP, making it very difficult to be KO'd, but... Manectric's attack allows you to attach two energy to a bench Pokemon, like, for instance, that Cresselia, or indeed a second Manectric. If Susie doesn't get the Mega here, she's going to start next turn with one energy on the Cresselia. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that she's not going to be getting a KO next turn. Unless she can get, you know, a KO on the Feebas or a Joltik. It's going to be exceedingly difficult. Now that Cresselia attacks for a Psychic Double Colorless. But I don't think she plays Double Colorless. At least most decks don't. Oh, and she's got to get rid of a Mega there. And she draws a Spirit Link. That's so cruel. That's, oh, and a Mega Turbo as well. Oh, that's cruel, ladies and gentlemen. Does she have another Mega? Oh, she puts a Spirit Link down and picks it up very quickly. Maybe Josh could call her on it because she took her hand off. I think we're less vicious in the UK at trying to point out misplays. Clearly, she changed her mind exceedingly quickly and never really played it. Of course, if you want to argue me in the comments, please feel free to do so. What I loved today was that everybody on stream was so nice. Everyone's happy to stand up, happy to be on stream, nobody said no. Just a really nice atmosphere. It was just a lovely, lovely tournament. And this is worrying now, because that was Susie's opportunity. She gets the Mega, she gets two more energy on the Benchman Ectric, and then it's Lysander for game. And it basically would be game there. Josh would have to pick up that, that Shaman. Um... I can't remember if I mentioned it a moment ago, but obviously the Fighting Fury Bow on the Joltik did take away the Shaman KO play. So Josh was very much aware that that could happen. Now, the missing the Mega there is, and this is what happens with Mega Pokemon way too often. She had the Mega, she sycamores it, she hits the Spirit Link. It's just upsetting. Because had Susie had it there, then she really is on for the win. She gets a KO, she goes down to two prizes remaining, she gets two energy on a Manectric, and as long as she can end a Lysander at some point in the future, she pulls up the Shaman, she gets the KO, and we're there. Oh, and even though she couldn't get the KO, look at this from Josh, AZ on the Shaman, Floatstone on the Feebas, DCE on the Joltik, and not only did he pick up the Shaman with AZ, he's not even playing it back down again. So he really is saying to Susie, look, I don't think there's any way you can get a KO here. But I'm going to make darn sure that you can't, just in case. Now, the other thing we see there is a, is a Cresselia with one energy. That actually does 70 damage for free energy. Now, that would be pretty useful in this matchup. Because that is enough to KO either a Joltik, even with a Fighting Fury Belt. Or a Pump Kaboo, unless it has a Fighting Fury Belt. And it gives up one prize. So what that would mean is that Susie could get a KO with the Cresselia. And force Josh to KO it. And then, like I've said, we're in seven prize territory there. Josh has two prizes remaining. If I believe it's two prizes. Yes, two prizes remaining. If Josh KOs the Cresselia... He's still got to KO another thing to get the KO. So it really doesn't matter that that Cresselia goes down. It's not the end of the world at all. And this is what I was saying about the prize race. Here, there is no EX on Josh's side of the field. So even though he went down by three prizes, he's got two prizes remaining and Susie's got a bench full of EXs. And those shamers, they, they ain't got much beef to them, ladies and gentlemen. They ain't got much heft. Oh, and Josh there telling us he's got nine Nightmarts and Discard. Thank you, Josh. Very kind of you, sir. Now, what's Susie going to do here? Because that Spirit Link takes away the KO here. Now, what she could do is... And there's a stadium in place. So remember that Cresselia has got free retreat. It's a Professor Birch. Now, if she had a muscle band, that uh, 
that Manectric would KO the Joltek. But of course, we know Josh has got enough Night Marchers to get the KO. Oh, it's a Tails on Bert, so she's going to be shuffling her hand in and only drawing four cards here. So what, she, what it looks like she's going to try and do is get the Mega up and then maybe leave the Cresselia active and just hope Josh doesn't have a Lysander. But we've seen, you know, he's played a lot of cards. We've seen his decks consistent. I'm imagining he probably does. And if he does, he's going to get the KO on that Shaman. Even an Enhanced Hammer to discard the DCE wouldn't save Susie here because we saw Josh play the Milotic to get the DCE. Maybe seeing this coming, maybe thinking, you know what, I really need a DCE next turn. Enhanced Hammer or a KO could really get me, so let's go for it. Now, she finally gets the Mega, but... Oh! Oh, this is beautiful! I forgot about Mega Turbo. Now we're rolling. Now Susie has a chance. Now we get the KO with the Mega on the Joltik. Susie goes down to one prize remaining, because it does 110. She gets to put two energy on the Cresselia, I would imagine. But we're still over to Josh here. Now here's what Josh needs. One more Night Marcher in the discard, or a Giovanni's. A Night Marcher and a DCE. Or a Night Marcher, DCE, Lysander to KO the Shaman. So he needs either Lysander, Night Marcher, DCE, or he needs Night Marcher in the discard. No, sorry, Night Marcher, DCE, either Giovanni's or extra Night Marcher in the discard. So there's three, three routes for Josh winning the game on this turn. It is, it's a pity that Susie couldn't get the KO with Cresselia earlier. But when you've got two Shaman on the bench, it doesn't really matter. Now, we do see a Shaman coming down. Is he playing free Shaman to draw one card? That's pretty full on. Although, might I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that that Mega Manectric one-hit KOs everything in Josh's deck. So... Oh, and I think there's an Ultimate coming down. That, 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 that K, the one hit KOs anything in Josh's deck. So it really doesn't matter what Josh does this turn. There are only two outcomes to this game. Either Josh gets a KO this turn and wins, or Susie wins. So it doesn't matter that he's, he's benching free Shaman to draw one card, because Josh, I wouldn't say it's desperation mode here. He's looking in moderately good shape. But he's very much in the position here where it really doesn't matter what he does. You know, he can bench Shaman and he can bench free Shaman for one card. It's all irrelevant. Now, he's playing the Sycamore, so he must have done the maths and worked out that he's got a very good chance of winning here. There's the Joltik. There's the DCE. I'm assuming he must have put another Night Marcher in the discard. Let's just check he's got 11. There's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven night marchers, two hundred and twenty, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the win for Josh. Congratulations, Josh. At winning your round one game. Thank you to those players for agreeing to be on stream. They are absolutely lovely. Thank you once again to Vinnie Gardner and all at Mad for Miniatures for a very nice, very welcoming tournament. I very much appreciate the hospitality. I'm going to be back. I've got seven rounds recorded from this game, ladies and gentlemen. I've got so many, I might have to put up a game a day this week just to keep up, because I've got permission to record at Blackpool Regionals on Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be, quite frankly, wonderful. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out my other videos. Make sure you click the like button. It will take a second. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Like it. Like it. You can do it. Go on. Liked it yet? Good. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already, and make sure you comment if you've got anything you would like to say. Thank you very much for watching. Look after yourselves. Till next time, my name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just a very quick little appendix here, just in case anyone was wondering. About 20 minutes into the game, Josh did use a Milotic, and it appeared that he used a Milotic under Hex Maniac. Now, I have gone back and looked at the video. I was discussing at the time whether 
Susie had in fact played Hex Maniac or not she had if you go back and watch you can actually see that Josh goes and grabs it out of her discard pile and puts it at the top now it appears that he used the Milotic to get a battle compressor but then didn't actually really play it and just put it back in the discard pile so essentially he went to grab it with Milotic and then realized he couldn't and did nothing nothing untoward happened at least not that I can see feel free to stick it in the comments if you disagree but if you look the video back his hand after using the Ultra Ball for the Milotic, he essentially has VS Seeker, VS Seeker, double colorless left in his hand. He uses the Milotic, picks up a Battle Compressor, puts it back down, and of course he can Ultra Ball for the Milotic under Hexlock. And then he uses a VS Seeker to grab a Giovanni's, uses that to draw some cards, including a Joltic, but then passes with the Feebas active and doesn't actually use any other abilities that turn. So that turn, about 20 minutes in, about halfway through, and we were considering, was he under Hexlock? Yes, he was under Hexlock. Yes, it looked like he used a Milotic, but in fact, he didn't really do anything that gave him any kind of advantage in the game, so it is very much a moot point. But just for the more eagle-eyed among you, ladies and gentlemen, I thought it was worth pointing out. Just once again, thank you for watching, look after yourselves, etc, etc. Have a lovely day.